Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, before we start the video, come here. Explain me this. You explain me. No, 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 no. You first explain me what is this? Why is this thing stuck at this number <laughs> since two days? I'm like, I've been like, I've been like, it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit. I, I do have an extra Gmail account which I can just log into YouTube and then make it uh, to 2K, but that's pathetic. I'm like, dude, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's the worst. So I was like, I've been waiting for my 2000 subscribers. But <laughs> all jokes aside, okay, cool. I hope you guys have been doing well. I hope you guys had a great week before and I hope you have a beautiful weekend and a week ahead. So before we get started, uh, you guys can see my reference. That's the one I picked up. Uh, today we will be making that. We'll model it completely and then, you know, the usual process of the render test family. We'll model it, texture it, and then we'll light it and render it. Uh, before that, uh, I want to give credits to the artist who made that, obviously. So here it is. Now here's the sad part, right? So I noticed the comments. <laughs> Dude, people are so mean. What's the first comment here? Obviously, hey, look, it's AI. Or is this AI, right? And then th this idiot. Oh, it's definitely AI. Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> you don't even know. Okay, but I mean, okay, cool. So I, I saw this post and I was like, I was, I was laughing and I'm like, you know what? Okay, people might think it's AI, but here on RenderTest, we make it happen. We take AI stuff, we take any stuff. We don't even know what stuff we take. We just take stuff and then make it. So welcome uh, if you're new here. And uh, for my returning subscribers, Hope you guys are doing well. I love you all. Uh, let's get started, okay? Let's not waste more time. So our scene is already set up. We have our render view here. And you can see that this time, the like the final product, you see how it's not in like complete 3D? It's just a front, uh, front shot of the camera, right? We are going to do that exact same thing, okay? Let's make that happen. Uh, let's not make the whole thing. That'll be not needed in this. You can see it that the front looks good. Okay, we'll just make the front. Awesome. So illustrations like this. Uh, let's see. Let's see how we can model it. Okay. Uh, boot up Blender. Follow me along, and yeah, we we'll, let's let's do this. Okay. So uh, just a, just a pointer before I start. We are going to use uh, plugins, right? Uh, obviously, I'm going to be using my hard ops. Uh, so. All the links will be in the description if you guys can get it. If you guys already have it, then it's good. Remember, everything I do, you can do it in Valina Blender. Please check my other videos out. I will show you exactly how you can do it in Vanilla Blender. It's just booleans and stuff. And once you do that, you can do this, right? Okay, cool. Let's start. So, hmm, how do we even, okay, cool. Obviously, everything starts off with a cube. So we take the cube. Okay, before that, I'm, you can see that I'm going to set my render view somewhat just like, you know, just like uh, the reference image here we have. But I'm gonna move this G, Z, and then press one. That should move it by one unit on the Z axis, right? So I think that's good to move this down a bit. Awesome. Okay, so mm -hmm. now we have this. What do we do, what do we do? Oh, uh, let's give it some height. So first, let's go to edit mode, select face, select the top face. You know what? I'm just actually going to literally uh, model it in the front view. Do it in orthographic, do it in orthographic with me. It should be much easier. So G and Z, because we just need to worry about the front, right? So what do you guys think? This height looks good, the camera, right? That looks fine. And then we select this, and then we select this, right? Yeah, or, even better, just go to object mode, go to this view, press S, X to scale it on the X, and then you can scale your camera. I think that looks good, right? Awesome. So when that's done, right now you can see that there are already bevels here on this corner, it's all smooth. And this side, you have a lot of, uh, you have a curvature here. So we'll have to see how we tackle that. 
but uh, for that we can actually do that right now and before this do you guys notice how there are cuts in our references here but you can't see through it so what this means is there's like an additional plane but if we cut right through you'll be able to see it through the render so what we need to do is we need two pieces of this because we're just going to take the render from the front right so we'll make two pieces so for example right what I'm trying to do is if I scale this on the Y just make this a thin sheet this is the sheet you're going to see right on the render that's it but if I duplicate this move it back right and then let's uh, set our this thing so vertex only move and close this vertex yeah so then press G press Y and then hit hold control and snap it so if I snap this piece now you have a back piece now here's the thing you can cut all the way through in the front piece here because the back piece will be blocking so when you have gaps in this you will still like you won't be able to see it because it'll become black right because of the back piece but if you were missing this the render you can see right through it so that's what I wanted to uh, solve so we just added a back piece to it not a big deal right and you know what you know what's even better instead of doing this is you just do get the basic shape split it in half and then fill the face let's do that that's actually a smarter way here let me control Z everything uh, da, 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 da. let's give it the width okay and then let's scale it there you go let's make our camera like that there okay looks good uh, maybe just like that uh, it doesn't matter doesn't matter the thickness okay awesome now that we have this you can see that there's a clear curvature here which has a limitation on this side so uh, let's add that go to edit Control R click drag and I'm just gonna see where it is from. so I'm just gonna roughly add that just like that see you can see this uh, sharp cut right so I'm just defining that over here so if I define that like that awesome go to object mode go to object uh, apply and then all transforms just apply all the transforms to that go to edit mode again and you should be able to select these two like that check this out you'll understand why I gave this cut here if I bevel this now check it out it actually it has a limitation right that's why I gave that usually and now you can just like do that and then give it like cuts let's say that much check that out see now you have more curvature right if you want if this first initial edge was pushed a little bit more then your bevel would be a little smaller if that is what you want to achieve here but for me this one looks good right so we have a limitation here and then there's a bevel here perfect so that looks good this side uh, is complete everything else you can see that it's just a normal bevel it's not too much right okay that looks good uh, I believe we should add bevels at the end let's just do that so we can just add bevels to the end and then the, the whole model will be complete so before this before we move forward let's uh, should we cut our object now I don't know when we should do that okay let me see let me see you know what we can just do it in the thing maybe now I'm just thinking what okay you know what let's do this let's go to this control R add one center loop just like that okay control R add one center loop right here go to vertex selection click on this click on that press J and then it will join press this press that press J and then it will join there you go so with that done if I go into face selection mode and go to wireframe there you go okay save your work I'm going to select everything here uh, look at that yeah all the front faces are selected right that's all that's what we need to work with press P and then P is for separation menu and then you say by selection because you have selected it right so if you go to uh, let's go solid mode again check this out now you have two pieces this is how you uh, separate object right uh, now that this is uh, done if you hit alt H I guess or was it shift H yeah shift H is uh, for isolation you can go to uh, edit 
select your edge just alt click on your edge and everything should be selected and then press F and it'll fill it right so go to object mode and now what about alt H yeah that's to bring back everything and rinse and repeat right object mode there you go now you have two pieces of the camera right now with this front selected you can just go all in and then just get, get all these cuts guys so let's do that okay before we do that uh, all w is to bring up hard ops menu you can see that it's over here so now let's go ahead and make this bottom cut so with just this selected if i press d you can see that we are in our cut menu and we are over here okay and with our object selected oh what the heck Oh yeah. Oh, is it getting cancelled because I'm clicking outside? That's weird. Wait, it's set to cut. It's set to this, right? Okay. Let me see if I. Oh, that's weird. Wait, why is it getting cancelled? What the heck? And why the heck is this window popping up? Okay, let me see. If I want that. Oh no. It's working, what the heck? Then why was that getting cancelled? Oh, all of a sudden it just decides to work? Yeah, all of a sudden it just decides to work. Okay, awesome. Well, well now you can see that uh, when we use our cut and let go of our mouse, just press space and it'll cut right through. You notice how it just cuts right through? But we don't need that, I think. We need intersect, which is slice mode. If you go into slice mode, it will cut it, but then it won't just delete the one you need, right? So you can see that we need at the bottom, press space, check that out. This is what you needed, right? You wanted one piece at the bottom, one piece on the top. That's what it does. It's just slicing, but keeping both of the pieces right so there you go that and that so we will be using slice to do everything else right so let's see this bottom it looks good okay just press um, Q go to settings and then wireframe there you go you can see now with the wireframe exactly how your camera looks awesome let's zoom out here okay now you can clearly see that there is a separate box here this is a whole unit and then it has multiple pieces in it correct so let's just make this slice first okay so we know that uh, our this thing is set to slice itself that's good that's good we go to this corner here it starts from somewhere here right just like that awesome and maybe with that press space there you go Look at that, it just cuts a piece out, right? That's what we are trying to do. And it, uh, so hard ops, how it works is when you have selected an object, the operation you're trying to do, maybe slice the cut works on that. Make sure you have selected the object. Now, for example, this will be really quick. You see that we have our unit, right? This is the unit piece here, right? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, right? And now you can just go ahead and slice this easily because this is already set to slice, so you can start slicing. Now, for example, this piece is exactly divided into two. Maybe you can give it variation, however you like, right? So first, I'm just gonna, see, just do that, press space. There you go, boom, right? It just slices. It's very easy with a hard up. So when you select this piece now, right, I'm just gonna go here. You can see that I will select this part, press space, and then it cuts it, right? So you take this, and I want to slice this off, boom, and then take this, and then actually this both needs to go here, boom, slice that, select that, boom. I hope you guys understood that. Right, so you see, we have the pieces exactly how we need it over here. That's it. That's, it's as simple as that, guys. Right. 
So now with that, you can see that we have a separation here as well. But check that out. Like at the bottom, all this whole slice here is not running on the top. You can see that this part is not sliced, but this part is. And then there's an extra part here. So this slice is not going all the way, right? So keeping all that detail in mind, if I select this, the front piece, zoom out, I should be only slicing it like this much, right? Yeah, because the middle will anyways be hidden. So just do that, press space. There you go, right? And then you're left with this main body piece. You can see that there's a weird slice here, but then there's a slice here as well. Okay, so how do we do this? Do we make the weird slice first? Yes, I think we do. We make the weird slice first. So it's going to start somewhere from here, I believe, like that. Oh yeah, and then it's just covered in this part. So we don't have to worry about that. Just do that and press space. There you go. Now you have that weird, this piece over here. And then you have this whole blue separate section. So that's in the main body here. So just click on the main body and maybe it's somewhat like that. Press space. You can readjust all of these cuts. Right? You can actually scale individual cuts and move individual cuts. You can do that later on. Well, I'm just roughing it out. This is called a block out. So once you block it out, then you can go ahead and select your cutters and then, you know, you can edit it. Don't worry about that. But over here, all I see an instant this block piece here as well. So this is from here. So I click on that and the block looks to be somewhat like that. Press space. There you go. And you got it, right? Pretty simple. And with that done, guys, I think we are done with our cuts. Yeah, our cuts are done. This is the whole camera. And you can notice that our back is unaffected, but the front is just cut all the way, right? So with that complete, let's see what do we have? What else do we have? Should I add the bevel now? Let me see. I think we can add the bevel now. It's not gonna affect that much. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do it. So the problem is if I add a bevel to this piece here, this won't get the bevel. So we'll have to keep that in mind, right? We'll have to somehow manage this piece so that in our front render view, it does not disrupt, like it doesn't show on the side and you know, all of that jazz, but okay, cool. Let's do one thing. Let's, I'm looking at the piece, right? And I think it's ready for its bevel. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Awesome. So if you just hit W, it will get rid of your hard ops. Now you can just go ahead and select Blender manually, just like that. With all this selected, I'm just going to hit Alt P. And when Alt P is, you can clear out the parent. The problem is every time you slice, Blender parents the object. Let's say this is the main main object, right? You slice a portion. Now this small portion which you sliced off is the child of the bigger piece, right? That's what hard ops does. It automatically parents it for you. So we don't need all that. So you just hit Alt P and then you say clear parent, but keep your transformations. That's it. Now check it out. If I move, do you see, do you see how weird it acts? This, this is what I was thinking. I'm like, why is this? Did we not? Oh, wait, select the whole thing. Make sure you set, make sure you select one. LP, clear parent. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's still, hmm. Why is this? Oh, wow, dude. Okay, usually it's it's all because it's parented, right? To one piece to the other. That's why it's acting weird. Yeah, you can see that these are just parents, but usually that should not happen. If I go... Wow, 
one second let me see oh yeah that just removes this whole thing okay cool uh let me see what's wrong with this it's been a while since i have uh, used the slice operation why is this not working i'll be back in just a second okay 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 i literally said one second and i just i was like shit so here's the thing when you slice right it's a modifier dude it's a boolean right so booleans are modifiers oh, so stupid okay so basically what you guys need to do is select the whole thing press q and do you see operations here and then you see smart uh, apply so when you smart apply it applies the boolean i'm stupid so what i thought was clearing the parent just okay so this is the funny part i was actually thinking in maya terms in maya basically you delete history when you delete history everything just breaks right the parent breaks everything breaks and it becomes very clean and i was confused with that so basically it's a boolean so it's a modifier so you apply that modifier that's pretty simple once you apply the modifier check this out now it should just yeah right you can see all pieces are different that's it now here's the thing if i click on a piece you can see that it's center pivot is here look at that see all the pieces center pivot is here right so if you don't want that you can select all this press q and then i've just set my quick favorites here so origin to geometry and you can see it automatically puts all the geometry in the center of all that awesome guys now that that's done okay yeah that's pretty cool okay so i believe you can now just select all this let's see let me see if i can select all that okay right awesome let me see. Let's just select the back piece also. Why, why just leave that, right? Now, when we have all these selected, if I press Q and hit Boolean, no, what, what am I even saying? Bevel. Look at that. You can add a bevel now, right? So, and do you see our render view? It already looks amazing, right? This is, so this is what I wanted to achieve. We make the model, we make our cuts, we select all the objects, then apply Boolean. Apply Boolean at, uh, I'm st okay, I'm sorry. Don't, uh, do not apply your Boolean, apply your bevel, okay? Apply the bevel at the end, when you know that your model is complete. So when you do that, that'll help, right? So if I hold shift, it should be even more smoother. And I think that's good. I'll just add in more, just like that. And then click to confirm, there you go. Look at this, it's so clean, right? If you press uh, Z and, okay, if you just uh, switch off the wireframe, there. You guys happy with that? That's clean, right? So no shading issues, looks clean, that's it. All the pieces are here and all the stuff. Now, I just realized, do you see that some pieces have tiny curvatures, right? You notice how that's a case? If you want to do all of that detailing, you will have to go all the way back to when we applied the modifiers, the Boolean, because you'll have to individually go and edit the cutter, right? And because over here on this channel, we do that little perfection stuff, let's, let's try. Let's see if we can go back all the way. <laughs> oh my God, I just realized that I missed that. Okay, let me see if I can get the there you go. You guys can see my booleans coming back, right? Now, I shouldn't be able to move this piece away. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Now, guys, so you see this curvature here? Let's add that. While your boolean is added, right? If you uh, go into, oh, we need to on our hard ops again, right? And then just go to ever scroll, right? Do you see? When you click on ever scroll, it uh, shows you the cutter. Here, see, it's cutter number eight. That's the cutter over here. Uh, I can show you by scaling it. If I press S and then maybe Y, scale the cutter here. I hope you understand, right? This, this cube, this cube which I scaled is the Boolean, the cut off from the main thing, right? You can individually move it. Now, if you're getting confused with that, I can actually go to edit mode of the cutter, right? And then check this out. If I go here and select this edge here, do you see? Check it out. So this is the actual cut. 
and this is the box it's being cut from it's referencing right if I select this and you see this curve here if I go in this side view you know what I'm just gonna show it you like this if I press Control B I can bevel it I can literally bevel the cutter and then it will follow on the main this thing there you go that looks good and then if I say okay to that and go to object mode check that out hide your cutter and it's done right so it's just a normal boolean but obviously even in vanilla blender when you do a boolean you hide the referencing cutter right the cutter box you just bring it back and then you edit it so uh, blender will take care of the rest right so it understands now that's a cut so that is basically how you do it and you can go ahead and do it for everything now so you can see that there's a curve here and here right so we can just take that Q ever scroll there you go see this is the box of that wait how is that even possible how is that even possible this is the box of it. what the heck I was like oh that's a box no Oh yeah, so when you select ever scroll, you can scroll your wheel and it'll highlight which cutter box you want. And, and you can select that. So there you go. See, I select the bottom one there by mistake. So just go select that piece, go to ever scroll. Ooh. That's weird, why is... Oh, there you go there it is because this is the corner that's the whole piece we cut it out from awesome so press this scale it out because we when we go to edit mode we want to select these two edges right here and that's the two edges here so control P there you go a small curve go to object mode and you can hide this cutter back Ta -da! and now we have the soft corners if you want to add that to everything you guys can go ahead and do that i believe the two major ones were these two and the definite wish uh like visible one was this everything else i think will be solved with just normal beveling right that's pretty much it awesome now that you have all this press w to escape out select this whole thing you guys remember press q uh, oh your option will go away bring back hard ops press q Uh, oh my god what am I doing yeah press Q operations smart apply okay so operations smart apply and there you go right now I can move it yeah I can move I select all this and then press Q quick favorites origin to geometry and then all transforms to delta just to clean it up a little bit okay but yeah there you go guys that's done now if i select all of this click on one and then zoom in press q bevel ta-da and it just takes the previous bevel you had look at that right now i can just go back and uh bring back our wireframe so that you guys can see it properly Oh, okay, it reduced the, this thing. Here, let me do it again. So Q, bevel, give it a little bigger one, and give it more loops. There you go, that looks much better. Okay, save your work. And yeah, that's pretty much it, awesome. So now that this is done, you can see that we have some sort of button here. Dude, look at the placement of this. This is like a weird image. Don't tell me this is actually AI, I'll feel so bad. Because you can see that the button here, and look, do you see this weird placement? Okay, I mean, whatever. But uh, we are creating it in 3D. Okay, so uh, we can bring back hard ops actually, press D, and you see this cut mode? Just select this, this is basically make mode. When you go to make, and then we want a uh, circle, right? So select circle, and we want a 100 uh, vertex circle so that it's much smoother and once you have that selected click on the piece you want to make that thing from and then you just click and drag there you go and uh, it should make it for you 
and then zoom out and then move your mouse do you see that so it asks you how much of a height do you want for that and there you go just make sure you sharpen it and you have your button right where you want it right so you just so you see how easier this was but the only difference you'll have to do in vanilla blender is just make a cylinder and just place it manually that's it that's pretty much it guys it's the plugin is just there to save some time for you that's it okay so let's move that the button looks like it's over here i'm just gonna press f focus on that awesome and i think there is an extrusion to this so i'm going to go to edit mode select face um, press i to inset and then just select that press e bring it out and then bevel this perfect there you go uh, select edge I want to select this edge and select that edge control B just want to give it a nice little bevel there as well of this mode and there you go look at that our buttons here right so that looks good and then let's see let's see what else Oh, we have something here as well. So maybe we'll just take this block or this block as the reference, right? And then we can just drag. And you should see that the circle is being made. And then drag it out, just like that. Select it and then sharpen it. And then press G, move it somewhere here. That looks good. Okay, perfect. So let's go to edit. Select that, insert it, bring it down, extrude, bring it out, inset to bring the inner circle, E to extrude it, and there you go, right? Go into this thing, select this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, control B. There you go, go to object, ta-da, that piece is done. <laughs> oh, you can see that there's a small piece here, right? If you guys want to make that. So let's go here, press D because we don't want a circle anymore. We want a square. So select that and just make a square. Just like that. Turn your view and tilt it out. And there you go. You have that piece, right? And you can see that, first of all, how is this piece aligned? So firstly, let's go to face. This is scaled up. You can see that it's a little bit scaled, right? Yes, that's right. And then control R, give it a loop in the center. Select your edge, select this edge, press G and move it out. You see that it's curved here right so to get that curve you need uh, you need an edge and then you pull it out and then you bevel it there you go see right so I hope you understand with that now you select this select that and then control B there you go and now you can bevel the corners as much as you want just like that awesome and with the edge selection mode you can select all the edges here and then control b and you can bevel it oh it's messing it up is it hmm. okay let's see if i go to vertex select this select that press j to join select this select that press j to join take this select all these press X and then dissolve edges there you go it's much more cleaner now right so if you take edge selection let's try it again okay control B how does it work now see now now your bevel is working way better right because our mesh is much better now there you go perfect Ta -da! and you have that piece you can push this 
in if you want if you don't want it to be extruded to out there you go from the front it already anyways looks good from the front uh, if you want it to be more smoother over here because mine is a little sharp you can see over here obviously this edge you'll just have to bevel it a little bit bigger right so you can do that uh, adjustment and I just realized there's one piece here and there's another piece here right guys so let's just quickly do that select that make sure it's on box right yeah it was on box so I will just select a piece like that and actually just pull this out sharpen it go to the corner and just check how big it is actually mm, mine is a little bit bigger so scale it on the Z just like that yeah that looks good and then actually just uh, move this a little bit here go into edit select the face and actually I want to move this just a little bit in like that and then go to edge select that and then push this down right because that's how it is yeah that's how it is awesome now that we have this we can just select this and that control B and then go all the way in there you go guys and you should see that you have your shape right coolio awesome and with that done you can see that there is actually a cutout obviously this is not all the way through it should be all the way through because you um, you have those straps which go through that right if this is a strap holder that is it's weird how it actually filled this area because this doesn't make sense there's nothing here it needs to be hollow but the image is filled okay no worries with that oh I just forgot if I control B and bevel this I need to give it more edge loops. There you go, that's so much better. Right? And with this selected, if I go into edit, select the face, this face here, control B, bevel that. Because it's so thin, like that, object part. Now you'll notice that this is beveled as well, right? And here, here's a tip, right? So now that we bevel this, it's because you can see that this is beveled here. But then this is this is completely you know flat but because we have this it beveled it this way if you don't want that go into object mode select the object right uh, we'll have to hide it first uh, isolate it and then go into edit select the face take the face uh, take this face and then delete the face here because here's the tip so when you bevel right guys the bevel which runs on this edge will follow on this edge but if an edge comes to an end where there is no face this is how the bevel acts check this out see but when you had that face even this edge was capable of beveling because it has a face right two faces one edge can bevel but when this face is missing this edge has no face support to get beveled right so that being said if I take my face now just select that right and check this out if I bevel that's what we needed right we just did not want it on that one side so there you go and go to object mode alt H to bring back everything oh yeah alt H just reveals everything so you'll have to go here into cutter and then just yeah hide that and there you go you have the side piece here now with this selected I'm going to take this I'm just going to take cut because that's what we want and then you can actually just cut this but you can see that it takes a perfect circle so keeping that in mind I'm just going to come to the center of this like that press space and it goes right through right but with that said if I select this press Q go to ever scroll and select our cutter now I should be able to manually move it check that out so I manually move it and I scale it on the Z because it's an oval there you go right yeah that's pretty much it and with the boolean done 
you can uh, press Q, Operation Smart Apply. That Boolean is applied now. You can hide the cutter, right? And you can see that this is really sharp. So you can just go to Edit Mode, select an edge, select this, select that edge right there, and then Control B. Ta-da! Object Mode, and there you go. You have a smooth cut, right? Awesome. So we finished that, save your work. <laughs> okay, awesome guys. So I think we finished all this for here. Oh, there's another piece over here. If you want, you can just duplicate this. I don't know why it would be on both sides of the camera. That's weird again for the image. And I believe you can see that again, This it's not a circle. It's it, you, you, you can see the cut here, but the image is weird. I don't know why that is even a thing there awesome but now let's just select this piece you can see that there's a cutout here so let's do that so I'm just going to go to circle and cut make sure this is 100 yeah that's 100 and you can see that right exactly on this side it's just a little bit over here there you go that's the positioning so I'll just cut it and then I'll cut it right inside and you see how it automatically beveled it it's because you have a bevel modifier attached to this piece here. See this one, right? Because we beveled it and because your modifier is already here, even in vanilla blender, if you are, if you have already put a bevel modifier and any other cuts you do, all the cuts will have the bevel modifier. So don't worry about that. And there you go. That. It makes life a little bit easier. Just adds a bevel automatically. Awesome. So with that piece done, you can see it. It's over here. Obviously, if you feel it's too big, you'll have to go to ever scroll, click on that, and now you can just play with the cut. So let's make it a little smaller, move it just right there. There you go. Yeah, that looks better. Awesome. Now, quickly, you can see that there are three cylinders here. Let's just make those. So I'm going to select that, go to make, first of all, select the cylinder. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And now with this, all you guys have to do is go up here and there you go. Ta-da! Right? You can see that it's been made. Sharpen it. Right? Awesome. Let's go over here. Let's see the placement of that. That actually looks good. That doesn't look bad at all. So let's go to edit. Select your face. There you go. What if I... Okay. So, hmm, 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 hmm. what if I delete this? Let me delete that. Select the edges. There you go. Right? Press E and press S. And then you can scale it outwards. Uh, there you go. Is that good enough? Yeah, you can see that maybe a little bit more. Awesome. And then press E, Z to build up your top knob and this you guys know just press F right and with all this done you can with uh, edges select mode you can select this edge and that edge as well and then give it a bevel perfect Ta -da! and your knob one is complete and you can go ahead and do it for the rest now here's the funny part this thing it looks like it's just upside down over here and I don't even know what that piece is. So, you know what? If I select this, Alt-P, and clear parent, there you go. That should not be affected now. Okay, awesome. Oop, what did I do? Okay, so save your work. Press W to get rid of your hard ops. Okay, now if I take this piece, okay? Hear me out. Check this out. If I Shift-D, move it here, scale it on the Z-axis, and put minus one. It'll flip it. Press Enter. Right? And then you can just press move that up and obviously it's a smaller version, something like that. Look at that. Right? And then just move this and maybe, where is its placement? It's over here. Just like that, on this edge here, just a little bit up, right? And you can see that this is up a little bit. So that's no problem because we haven't uh, beveled this one. So we take this, bevel that. Before we do that, we have to move that up a bit. 
There you go. Perfect. Look at that, it's done, right? If it's too small, you can obviously scale that a little bit up. There you go. And then let me scale that there, put it just like that. And then from the top view, I'm just going to push this in front and push this maybe in the center somewhere like that, hopefully, right? Awesome. And now you can see that there is one final, this thing here. So we'll have to take care of that. So I'll just click on that and Alt W and then I can make my, ooh, it has already gone to cut back again. So uh, 100 and then let's see. Let's maybe make it from here. Oh, and you see the last circle has those ridges outside. So this is actually going to be outside the camera. Something like that. Why? Because here, I'll tell you. Uh, it should be outside the bounds of the camera so that you can actually spin it easily, right? But obviously you won't see that in the render. So don't worry about that. Just press G and then move it. We just want to see it from the side view, see? You can see that it's a little bit out here, but mostly over here. So I'm just gonna give it that. Just like that, see? Right? So that looks good. And this is the outer area over here. So your thumb can like actually spin uh, that. So with that selected, right? Let me see. It can actually be a little more thicker. Like that, move this up, right? Around that much. Yeah, okay. And then actually here, let me just scale this a little bit. Perfect. Now, if you go into edit mode, guys, select faces and alt click on uh, one side of the face, it selects the ring, right? But you can see to make this ridges, you need alternate. So you can go into select here and do you see checker deselect? Click on that. Ta-da! So that basically alternate selects it. So with that selected, just press uh, E and you should see that you have extruded it. Cancel the operation, press S and then scale it out. And you can do that. And there you go, you have your edges out as well. Okay, perfect, awesome. So you can just go into object mode. With this object selected, you can uh, Quick favorite origin to geometry object let me apply all transforms to that and then just press Q and bevel and there you go give it a small bevel we don't want a too big one and then give it more let's take it ta-da it's more clean now awesome that looks great and with that save your work <laughs> okay awesome now that uh, you guys can see that we almost have our stuff, uh, you know, it's almost done. That's good. That's good. Now for this main part, let's do it. Uh, I'm just going to remove hard ops now. And oh, you guys can see that this have this, these have ridges as well. You see that? Okay, we'll, we'll I'll show you a hard ops way to uh, get that. But for now, for now, let's do this. So uh, mesh and we get a cylinder. The vertex count can be 200 because it's a very smooth, this thing and it's the main focus, right? We want it to be smooth. And then rotate it 90 degrees, there you go. Let's go orthographic, move it up. That's the center, correct? Let's see how big this is actually. So let's scale it. Scale in. Dude, how big is the circle? Okay, I think that's the way. <laughs> yeah, I think this is exactly how it is. But the only issue is this part is touching here. So this, so our camera is actually more white. That's the only difference. No worries, that's completely fine, right? 
so with that i think our camera front is done yeah and let's see how much do we want it to extrude out i think that actually looks good right so go to edit select this face and push this in just for our visual feed look at that right and there you go now if you want you can actually just scale this a little bit if you just adjust it the way you want it right okay now one once this is done we can go and give this um, really nice lens to it okay so let's see how can we achieve that okay if we go into edit i feel the best way guys is let's delete uh, this thing let's delete the face here select the edge and select the outer edge now you just extrude in scale and actually draw your lens okay so what i mean is let's see the layers let's let's make the first layer right so uh, press e there you go scale it you see how i made the first layer there you go check that out right now with this selected i'm just going to press e and then scale it to make our second the second thickness that is good right and then this is actually the whole lens itself so i understand that so press e scale it get the first lens thickness that that looks good right yeah awesome now with this selected you can see that this is really dark so it actually goes in now so you can scale this back in something like that right you can actually just wait move this a little bit more there you go to give it more depth and you can see that it comes in straight so e s so when you press e and s it just extrudes and scales so i'm giving it the first cut this cut here and then e s second and you see that this is actually a little bit front so i think this is on an inclination this is what i feel so here if you go on this phase itself just scale this down to actually merge both of them and actually move this do you see that do you see how you already gave the inclination now that this is done press es bring that in and actually move this back in because that's how i feel it is and then es this is just the straight this thing ey to go back because i feel you can see we are at the inner circle which is really dark and then es again and then ey and then es for the final this thing EY and then F there you go so I hope you understood what I meant draw your lens out right just scale it scale it scale it all the way in and with that done guys I think yeah that's pretty cool that looks cool now if I hit Control R you can see that you can just apply this this is why I just told you guys to merge both of them and with this done now here's the thing check this out so we'll take these faces first of all and extrude them outside because I feel this is another piece. So there you go. The extrusion is a little bit outside, right? Control R, click on that and then give it this gap here, right? And then select this edge here and select Control Shift and select this edge here. These two edges need to be beveled with no gaps like uh no loops in the middle and with that done with them all selected just press e and then y you can push that in right and there you go you already gave it a cut now let's select this face and this is extruded in as well there you go that's the cut there and now the long awesome now if you want you can individually just select your edges and actually give them a bevel like 
so you guys understood like here let me show you uh, if you select this edge here now for example you can see this edge here this one and this one these have a bigger bevel than the rest right so for that if you don't want to go through all the headache and you're like oh that's just too much then you can just give it overall bevel and it should work right so for the sake of this video I'm just gonna go bevel this really quickly add in loops like that there you go select that 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 edge that edge and that edge I believe these edges over here have the same bevel so I'm just gonna give them a small bevel like that now for the interior obviously you can't see it right so there's this this and that give it a small bevel there you go this edge definitely needs a nice bevel and this edge and yeah, this edge right they can have a soft bevel as well and then the inner one this piece and this piece can actually have a bigger bevel again there you go good object burn ta-da there you go and your lens is ready right so with this uh, ready now what you can do is you can see that the center pivot is perfect right click on this object and press Q go to uh, quick favorite origin to 3d oh what did I do oh my bad uh, I want the opposite oh is it shift s yeah shift s and then cursor to select it see there you go so the cursor comes in the center right now that this is done here uh, press alt w and bring back your hard ops right shift a i'm going to go to mesh select cube check this out i'm going to move that up scale it down and actually just bring this on top of the camera g and c bring that down just like that scale it this is the ridge I'm just trying to make one single ridge and I'm going to make it a little bit more prominent you can give it more uh, you can make it more smaller right so G and Z there you go and then S and Y there you go look at that that's the ridge right you see it just one small ridge like that now when you select this right guys uh, here let me just do this before I do anything else. Select this edge, this edge, bevel, just remove it. I'm just going to keep the ridge like that, right? So now when you have that, if you select this and uh, remember how we move the cursor to the center of the uh, lens, if you press uh, Q, origin to 3D cursor, now its origin is on the 3D cursor, right? So it's on the center of this. With this done, and your hard op selected if you press q there's something called uh this thing let me show you what, what was it it was radial array right oh and then obviously it needs to be changed so press x to change the axis when you're in hard ops right and look at that you can now move it right now all you have to do is scroll up guys right so you understood so press Q go to mesh tools radial array and now it's on the Z axis so press X now it's on the X axis press X again and now it's perfect and then scroll wheel and do you see how automatically you're giving it ridges there you go I'm not gonna give more but uh, I hope you understand there you go that's it pretty simple right so that's uh, radial array that's how the job is done there now let's go to the top of uh, this guys you you guys can easily do this so shift a we are going to give a cube right and then just align the height first just like that awesome that looks good and I think that yeah I mean even this looks good over here so 
just go over here, select face, GY, push this here, select this face on top, and then scale. Oh, uh, scale on the X. That's how you have to scale, or else it'll make it small like that. It won't scale just like that, it'll make it small. So we just want it on the X axis. I think that looks good. Awesome. And let's finalize the height. So it needs to be somewhere here, just like that. Awesome. Cool, guys. Okay. Now, I just need to go to wireframe because I need to select the bottom face. Go to solid view again. Snap. Now I can move this down. And then scale it on the X. There you go. See? And then I'm just going to bring this down. And there you go. I think that's cool. That's done, right? Yeah. And you can now just go ahead and play. Like if you want this to be larger like that or anything. Right? That's pretty much it, guys. And you guys got it. Awesome. And if you don't want uh, this thing... If you don't want like it to go here, so you can just push it. And uh, you know, you can adjust the size of this as well now. So I'm just going to make it more, not to disrupt too many ridges. There you go. And that looks good. Awesome. Now go to object mode and there we have it. All we have to do is now just hit a bevel. <laughs> And then just increase that. And there we go. We got it. Awesome. Obviously, I won't be writing the name, but you guys can go ahead and brand it however you would like. But with that, uh, I guess we are pretty much done, guys. The only thing uh, last left is here. Let me just uh, do that. Press D make here and then select that and if you guys notice there is a small piece over here so move that rotate it 45 okay well, minus 45 there you go and then G and then put that piece where it belongs. Awesome. And then you can just go ahead and uh, bevel this. Just like that. And there you go. Your piece is done. Right? Okay. Uh, with that, guys. Ta-da! <laughs> I think so. <laughs> what are we missing here? Let me just uh, settings by frame. Look at that. Oh, dude, that looks clean, right? Awesome. Um, let's just select all of this. Alt P, clear parent and keep transforms. Quick favorites, origin to geometry. Oh, my bad. Remember we, we made this, guys, right? This is all the ridges, right? Do you remember what we need to do? We need to apply the modifier or else it'll just weird out. There you go. Now select all this. Q origin to geometry and see now everything is clean right? and then all transforms to Delta and look at that everything is clean and it's all peace and I mean if you want to animate it which I think I will we'll see uh, we'll think about what we want to animate maybe the button spinning jumping moving all that stuff but there you go okay cool that's for the other video this is just modeling but with that what do you think is the camera looking okay right okay now the final thing we'll have to do is let me just move this out okay you know yeah the final thing we'll do is bring this out just like that go into our render view you can see that it's set to this and then I'm going to set to 4k horizontal Ta -da! there you go and now just so our camera can see it Okay, select your cam, right? 
go into its options and do you see how its location and everything is uh, moved with its rotations as well select all this press zero guys you see how it just looks down right snap up and you notice how it's off center from the y it's this uh maybe it's sorry it's x right yeah there you go right select this press zero snap it to the center right now with this camera selected what the heck is this delete that with this camera selected right rotate it on the x do you see look at that see and then we want 90 exactly flat and you can see that our camera is dead center on our camera and our camera is dead center on this thing now if you press g and c and move it there you go you can get your perfect shot of how you want the camera to look Ta -da! there you go looks good now uh, you can move it in and out and here is what i want you guys to do see how it's fully flat this one because it's almost orthographic if you select your cam click on your camera here do you see your focal length it's 50 50 is normal if anything which goes above 100 110 the camera starts looking like an orthographic camera check this out if i hit 120 look look at my render view you see how it zoomed out you see how the camera is like right so just take it move it back okay all you have to do is move it back there you go and you see it already looks flatter right whereas if i reduce this here check it out if i like make it this small and then move it front look at the foreshortening do you see it the foreshortening like the lens is too it's very close and then it goes right that's basically foreshortening right you can just take a shot however you like but notice how you completely miss this top this circle here see you can't see it anymore right but then if you put that to 150 and then move it back now you can see it see there you go so you can clearly see that okay it is making it orthographic it's flattening it out right you don't have visual depth to it anymore now it looks already good right so if you want you can just bump this up again there you go and then push it back more to make it more flatter there you go awesome with that guys our camera is set up and our this thing is set up let me look at that look at that that look at that that look at that that that, that, that. <laughs> so our camera is done it's modeled it's ready and in the next video we shall texture it we shall light it and let's render it and while i'm going to do that let me just think about how i'm going to animate it right and then i'll give you guys a simple animation with that but um, that's pretty much it no more ai we actually modeled our own thing right so when you guys post this you can be like nah fam this ain't ai <laughs> But yeah, there you go. I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video, right? Uh, now, I, if you see my previous videos, I'm like, we are so close to 2,000 subscribers. But what do I say now? We are like, we are one, one person, please. <laughs> we are just one subscriber away from 2,000. But thank you guys again. Uh, you guys are making my dream come true. Uh, the last time when I mentioned can we even hit 3000 subscribers 4000 subscribers by the end of the year i got personal messages where people told me you'll easily hit it so i never had that much confidence in myself so thank you guys so much for being a part of that uh, and for everything you guys do um, have a good weekend have a good week i will see you next saturday sunday right Take care, okay? And keep creating. Bye-bye.